Hi, and welcome back to the Vagrant from Scratch course. In this video, we're going to explore the Vagrant file and discover how you can customize it to represent your own bespoke environments. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Before we look at the Vagrant file itself, let's look at some of the basic commands that we will be using to get some familiarity with what they do. The Vagrant file is a Ruby file, which is used to describe the configuration of your Vagrant environment. You can create a default Vagrant file, which has a single virtual machine in the environment by using the command Vagrant init and passing the box you want to use for your virtual machine as a parameter. We've already covered boxes in a previous video. Check it out if you need a refresher. For this video though, we will be using the default Vagrant file produced by running the command Vagrant init bento slash ubuntu-16.04 as our starting point. Make sure you run the command in the root directory of your project, because that's where you want the Vagrant file to be created. When you're in a directory which contains a Vagrant file, you can use the command Vagrant status to see the status of your Vagrant environment. In our case, we can see that the environment has not yet been created. As well as the Vagrant init and Vagrant status commands, there are a number of other commands which we will use in this video. For now, I'll give you a brief description of what they are and what they do, and later you'll see them in action. The first is Vagrant up, which creates and configures your Vagrant environment as defined in the Vagrant file in the current directory. The next is Vagrant halt, which shuts down the environment. And the last is Vagrant destroy, which deletes all of the resources which have been created as part of your environment. You need to run these commands from the directory which contains the Vagrant file for your environment. The Vagrant virtual environment we will be creating in this video will be set up to run as a single virtual machine on top of a Windows 10 host. The virtual machine will be running an Ubuntu Linux operating system. We will use Vagrant to configure the environment so that it is running an Apache web server on port 80 of the virtual machine. The port will be mapped to port 8080 on the Windows host machine for easy access. Vagrant will also automatically configure SSH to be running on the virtual machine on port 22 and have that map to port 2222 on the Windows host. Keep this set up in your mind as we explore the Vagrant file throughout the rest of the video because we will keep referring back to it. I've opened up the Vagrant file that was created by running the Vagrant init command earlier. The first couple of lines are for text editors. They declare the file to be a Ruby file, and this allows text editors to interpret them as such, even though the file name does not end with the typical Ruby suffix of .rb. You can see that my editor, Emacs, has recognized it as a Ruby file and is providing syntax highlighting. In Ruby, the hash character is used to begin a comment, and so all of the lines you can see which start with a hash are just comments for us which will actually be completely ignored by Vagrant. You need to give a value of either 1 or 2 to the vagrant.configure directive to indicate the configuration version of the Vagrant file. You should not be using 1, because that configuration version has been deprecated. We will stick with the newer configuration type. 2. We pass a block with one parameter that we call config to the vagrant.configure directive. This is a Ruby peculiarity, so don't worry too much about it if you don't fully understand. This parameter can be called whatever you want. Just make sure you refer to it correctly when you are using it within the scope of the block. The first thing you need to configure in your Vagrant file is the box which you will be using. For us, since we use the Vagrant init command and pass the command the parameter of bento slash ubuntu-16.04, the box has already been set in the Vagrant file and we will just leave it at that. We've covered boxes in much more detail in a previous video on the course, so check that video out if you need a refresher. If you've not seen that video, then for now, just understand that a box is a virtual machine image, and for this video, we will be using an Ubuntu one. Let's delete the comments which are here by default to clean up the Vagrant file as we go along. Occasionally, creators of boxes will release an updated version. When an update for a box is available, Vagrant will, by default, let you know. If you want to disable this, you can uncomment the line, setting box check update to false. I don't recommend doing this, and neither does the Vagrant team, so we will just delete this comment, leaving the configuration as its default. The next two parts of the Vagrant file contain two lines which are essentially doing the same thing. They are mapping a port on the host machine to a port on the guest virtual machine. The difference between them is that the second one only allows incoming traffic from the IP address 127.0.0.1. This IP address is of course the loopback address, also known as localhost. Basically this means that the only access to the ports will be from your local machine. This is what you almost always want. There is no need for our environment to be public. 
if you recall our use case, our Apache web server will run on port 80 on the guest VM. We map it to port 8080 on the host. We also only allow access via local hosts IP. The next part of the configuration relates to making a private network. We are going to explore this in another video on the course where we cover multiple virtual machines. For now, we don't need this so we can just go ahead and delete it. The next part of the configuration commented out relates to a public network. This should rarely ever need to be used and even when it is it will only be for advanced use cases. Even the Vagrant documentation says that this feature is quite confusing and will most likely be replaced with something else in the future. Since we're not going to use it let's just go ahead and delete it out of our configuration. You can use the synced folder directive in the Vagrant file to share directories between the host machine and the guest virtual machine. You should know that Vagrant automatically shares the entire project directory on the host machine at the virtual machine path slash Vagrant. We will explore this in a minute when we launch the Vagrant environment. For now though, I want to share the HTML directory that I have stored at the root of our project on the host machine at the specific location of slash var slash www slash HTML on the virtual machine. The directory itself contains a simple HTML file called index.html that will act as the home page for the Apache web server that our Vagrant environment will contain. The file is just a basic HTML page. Mounting this single directory is just an example so you can see how synced folders work in Vagrant. In reality, you may want to mount other things such as directories containing configuration files. When writing a synced folder directory in your Vagrant file, remember that the first path is on the host and the second is on the virtual machine. The next section is the provider specific configuration options. The provider is the virtual machine software you will be using, which in our case is the default of VirtualBox. The settings are configured in another block, with the block parameter being called VB by default. So to amend the settings, you set properties of the VB parameter. I'm going to set the graphical user interface property to be false and set the memory allocated by VirtualBox to the VM to be 2 gigabytes. The next section of the configuration is for provisioning. Provisioning is all about getting the software you need to run your applications, including any dependencies, onto your machine. You can choose to provision your virtual machine using shell commands, as is the case for the default block that is already there, or using Docker, Puppet, Chef, Ansible, or any other tool which Vagrant supports. For this video, we're going to keep it simple and stick to using simple shell commands. This syntax of an all capital word shell is essentially a here document. If you're not familiar with here documents, check out the Wikipedia page for more information. But for now, all you need to know is that anything from the first occurrence of the word shell to the next occurrence forms a multi-line string, also known as a here document, that you can use to define the commands that you want to execute when your machine is being provisioned. In our case, we want our virtual machine to be running an Apache web server and since we're running an Ubuntu virtual machine, the commands we need to issue are apt get update to update the packages index and apt get install dash y Apache 2 to install the Apache web server. The dash y is needed so that the Ubuntu machine will just install the package without prompting the user to confirm that they want to install it. If you don't add the dash y, then Vagrant will time out waiting for the user's input and your provisioning will fail. An important thing to note here is that these provisioning scripts will be run with root privileges, so there is no need to prefix your commands with sudo. The first time you boot up your Vagrant environment, all of the provision blocks in the Vagrant file will be run. Right now, we only have one provision block, but you could have multiple. After that, whenever you start up the environment, the provision blocks will not run again unless they have been explicitly marked to do so or you force them to using a command on the command line. This suits us because there is no need to run the commands to install Apache again and again. Once it's installed, it's there. But to illustrate how to create a block that will always run, we can create one which simply echoes something out and mark it to always run. The final part of the configuration which I would like to cover is more to do with convenience than anything else. By default, Vagrant will create a name for your virtual machine and refer to it in its logs and whatever is printed to stand it out. Most likely you will want to customize the name so that it is something you choose rather than the one generated by Vagrant. There are three extra lines you should add to your Vagrant file to make sure that the name you choose is used by Vagrant as well as VirtualBox. 
The first directive to configure is config.vm.hostname. This will be the hostname of the guest virtual machine. I'm just labeling it web-server. The second line is config.vm.define. I'm going to call this web-server2, but notice how there is no equal sign. This will be the name of the virtual machine as it is used by Vagrant for standard out and logs. We will use this construct again in a later video where we define multiple virtual machines in the same Vagrant file. The third line goes in the provider section. This will be the name of the virtual machine as it will appear in VirtualBox. Let's just name this web-server2 so that all three configuration options that we've set all use the same name. And that is our Vagrant file. To create the environment we've defined in our Vagrant file, we can run the command Vagrant up. This will make Vagrant look for a Vagrant file in the current directory and spin up an environment which matches the configuration specified within it. Let's go through the output of the Vagrant up command so we can understand what it's telling us. Firstly, it's importing the box from the local cache. Vagrant will create a copy of the box and this will act as the starting point for our virtual machine. We can see that the output of each line begins with the name that we gave to the VM in the Vagrant file. This comes in handy when your environment contains multiple virtual machines, but for us, with only one virtual machine, it doesn't really make a difference. Vagrant then forwards the ports which we have asked it to. In addition to mapping port 80 on the VM to port 8080 on the host, as we described in the Vagrant file, Vagrant also maps port 22 on the VM to port 2222 on the host. This is done for easy SSH access. I'll show you how to SSH into the VM in a minute. The method that we will use for SSH is via a public-private key pair, which Vagrant will generate and manage for you. Next, you can see the warnings. Don't worry about these. Basically, Vagrant is trying to connect to the VM, but is unable to do so because it hasn't booted yet. That's fine because it will just keep retrying and succeed once the VM is booted. You can then see Vagrant mounting the directories. Just like the port mappings, it mounts the path which we specified in the Vagrant file, as well as automatically mounting the entire project directory to the path of slash Vagrant. Then Vagrant runs the provision block to update the packages index and install the Apache web server. It also runs the provision block we created to echo out the message hello from the Vagrant file. Now that the provisioning is complete, when we run the command Vagrant status, it replies by telling us that the environment is up and running. Remember, as part of our environment, we mapped port 8080 on the host to port 80 on the virtual machine. Let's go to localhost 8080 in the browser. Here, we can see that we are accessing the Apache web server, which is running on the virtual machine on port 80. We can also see that the home page that is displayed is the custom one that we mounted using the synced folder configuration in our Vagrant file. We can issue the command vagrant ssh to ssh into the box. Remember, that port 2222 on the host has been mapped to port 22 on the virtual machine. And so behind the scenes, Vagrant is using this port mapping, as well as the key pair it's managing, to allow for easy SSH access into the virtual machine. We shared the HTML directory on our Windows 10 host machine with the Ubuntu VM at the path of slash var slash www slash html. When we navigate there, we can see that it contains the index.html file, as we would expect. Also, Vagrant automatically shares the whole project directory at the virtual machine path of slash Vagrant. If we navigate there and list the contents, we can see that the Vagrant file itself, as well as the HTML directory we looked at just a second ago, are there. So you can access any file placed in the slash Vagrant directory on both the VM and the host automatically. This is an extremely convenient feature of Vagrant that you will find yourself using all the time. To get out of our SSH session, we can just type exit. To stop the virtual machine, we can run the vagrant halt command, and to delete the VM, we can run the vagrant destroy command. You should know that none of the files which are in the project directory will be deleted, so it is safe to issue the vagrant destroy command and not have to worry about losing those files. Since our vagrant file is not deleted, if we want to recreate the environment, it's as simple as running the vagrant up command again. There you have it. You now have a solid understanding of the Vagrant file and how you can customize it. To learn even more, watch the next video in the course. If you want to see more informative content, be sure to subscribe and check out some of the other videos available on my channel.